are, we are a team. We are, we are, we are a family. We are a tied out nation. We are, we are, we are Wake Forest. I tell kids when we recruit them, we have a beautiful campus and uh, incredibly nice arena. But you don't you don't pick a school because of a building or uh, or an arena. You pick a school because of people. In terms of the college basketball world, Wake Forest is very unique. I think it's one of the very few schools that can couple high-level academics, prestigious degree, with big-time basketball, uh, basketball at the highest level. I'm a little biased, but the ACC is the greatest conference in the United States. It's unrivaled. So being able to couple that, that uh, it's a heck of a product for, for us to sell. It's a small university, but it's, it's also big in academics. And then also how they love the athletics here. A lot of kids grow up wanting to be Blue Devils or Tar Heels or Wolfpack Nation. I always wanted to be a Demon Deacon, you know, so it's always held a special place in my heart to, you know, just to come and be part of the atmosphere. Small school, you know, in size, but big in stature. One, two, three. Today. It's very unusual for, for teams to be able to go 10 deep on their bench and not, you know, not have a fall off and not get hurt. Um, and I think this team can do that. And I think if you want to make a run at a championship in this league, make a run at a Final Four, you better have a lot of good players. We know that we can win basketball games. We, we know our, our ultimate goal is to win the ACC. And I'm thinking previous years, we, we said it. Did we mean it? I, I don't know inside if we did, but this year we're saying it, and not only are we saying it, we really mean it. We're very talented, but we're very young. Probably in our first seven kids, we have two freshmen and two sophomores. And uh, they're talented. But the youthfulness of this team challenges me sometimes. Come on, Farouk! We got four guys working their tail off. You let your guy catch it. The guys are like, all right, I got you. I got you. You know, and I think that's, I think that's what's going to make this team special because everybody wants to win instead of, like, want to do this, want to be great. But I think it's the we instead of me. And that's what's different. When we lost coach as a team, and I lost him personally as a friend and as a coach, I took it upon myself to live every day to the fullest. The memory of him and the motivation in all of our hearts to still fulfill and finish what he started uh, lives with us all every single day. I remember the day it happened, I was in class. I remember a friend of mine texted me and was like, is coach all right? They told us that he was just in the hospital. You know, how tough Coach Foster really is. You never thought, like, it, would, it could really happen or he could really be on. I'm like, oh, Coach would be all right. He's tough. So then we come into the office and uh, we, we see a couple of our coaches crying and, and stuff like that. We don't know what's going on. We're thinking Coach is all right at this time. Maybe he's in critical condition in the hospital. And all of a sudden, we get to um, one of our academic advisors' house, and they say he's gone. It was just unbelievable. When it first happens, you're just in shock. Thank goodness we had a, a real closeness, a tight bond amongst everybody, because that's what, that's what got us through it. And uh, I, I think when, when, when talking about Skip, he, he made sure that there were good people in his program. In light of that, that's what enabled us to get through this. The one thing that, that was the medicine for me was going up there to the gym and just working. Uh, Coach Foster's favorite saying is there's no greater place than the gymnasium. The thought in your head that you'll never see him again is the toughest part for me. When we put on tapes from last year's games and we're reviewing our preparation for whoever we played, Skip would be on the sideline. The first time it happened, we were really taken aback because it was the first time you put the tape on and you saw him. 
as we're showing those to the kids, you, you can't help but see coach at times on the sidelines. And you wonder what those young guys are thinking. In that sense, it was an incredibly difficult year. He was always not only in our memory, but in our sight. There's no question there were times last year in the locker room I broke down. Last year, the Duke game, we had a big win against Duke here. And I remember just going back in the, in, the, in the restroom by myself after the game, and I just said, wow, you know, I just wish he could be here to share this because he, he lived for big games, and that, that was his thing. And, and I knew that from being around him so long. So I was happy for the team, and I was excited, but I, I went back and I just shared a moment by myself, and I just kind of got emotional and said, man, he, he's looking down on us because he, he would just be, you know, elated right now. To me, he was, he was a great coach, but off the court, he was, he was unbelievable. He's so deeply entwined into the fabric of this program because he's the reason that all of us are here. None of us would be here. Nobody in this program, top to bottom right now, would be here without Skip Prosser. He had such a connection with this community and with the Wake Forest community, the student body, the fan base, that uh, you know his presence is still here. He'll, he'll never be forgotten. And um, even to this day in our staff meetings with Coach Gaudio, we'll, we'll say stuff and we'll say, we'll revert back to what Coach would say. And you know, Coach would handle this this way, or he would say this this way. Sometimes in, in practice, Coach Gaudio will say something and like I'll look at ESR Harvard and I'll be like, man, that's something like Coach P. And they'll be like, it did. Or like sometimes Coach, ba Coach Battle will say something and be like, Coach, Coach Prosser would have said that. And it's just crazy to hear Coach Prosser coaching through our coaching staff now or even the players. And it's amazing to see how, how much of an impact he had on all of our lives. Even now, when I go up there and uh, I get tired, I, I might not want to work. It just feels like extra eyes is looking down upon me like, ish, hey, you gotta turn it up another gear. The, the, the memory of him and the motivation in all of our hearts to still fulfill and finish what he started uh, lives with us all every single day. On three geeks, one, two, three. Yeah. Hustle down. People always ask us to, to, to compare Skip to Dino and, and both of them are teachers at heart. I mean, they were both high school teachers and they were passionate about, about teaching. But uh, Skip was a little bit more laid back and a little bit more deliberate. Dino, you know, is the type that, that'll go nose to nose with you and get in your face and, and, and he gets his point across that way. He's a terrific teacher. He's very passionate about what he does and he's a very, very uh, astute basketball mind. Last year, Dino did a great job of putting his stamp on the team. It was a tough year emotionally for the players and, and, and our staff as well, but I think the way he handled that really, really kind of turned the page and put his stamp on the team. And there's no doubt, you know, now this program is his program. So we're going primary, secondary, and I'll call out what we're running. He's funny to me and to a lot of the guys, and he always has a story about everything. The guys on the team like make fun of me because I do kind of a good impression of him. Before he uses bad grammar, he always says, excuse my bad English. Whenever I want to throw the word ain't in there, I'll say, excuse my bad English, but that ain't the way we're going to do it. Like he'll, he'll look at James and be like, James, now, Tyler Hansborough, he, he, he's a beast. And if you don't box him out, excuse my bad English, but you, you ain't getting the rebound. When he sees this, it'll be the first time he's ever saw it. I've never done it in front of him. Well, I'm going to have to see that. We're going to straighten that out. <laughs> Good. Boards. Boards. Great pass, JJ. Harvey, go! You're not going to have success on Saturday afternoon or Sunday night if you don't do it Monday through Friday. Close out, pack. Close out one-on-one. -on -one. Here we go.